Mm, mm, mm. Damn, good game. Damn good game indeed this day. Alliance, very good work. Today stands as one of your most intense and definitively fought battles, in my eyes, I feel. As you guys gave this whole clan battle everything you guys had to give. Literally everything was pushed to the limit for you guys as maximum effort was attained from all of us here today. And much respect and love goes into the magnitude of that kind of hard work. You guys should feel very proud of yourselves as a very huge milestone was acquired this day. The elite guard was given a huge runaround where they almost were able to be surmounted. But though they did capitalize both times, you guys kept them on their toes the entire time. The whole clan battle here went off without a hitch. No setbacks happened. This was a very, very good turnout for a roster outline that had happened here today. A number of people in the AOC chat lit up with wanting to try and go head-to-head -head with the Cybertron Elite Guard because they want that challenge. All of them wanted to engage wholeheartedly in that challenging tier that is standing before them. And a couple of nice old faces were able to make a return in the Alliance since first studying the Alliance back up here. Swifty Mongs was able to get some time off of college and was able to also join in on this clan battle and was amazing. And Darkrai was able to join in on this one. And oh man, it was it was so amazing. And then there was also the debut of the Alliance's new member, this um, Luis. I am Luis, the um, this uh, the Ger this uh, German player from the Masters of Cybertron clan. He was between clans after he got kicked out of MOC, and then we picked him up on AO. We picked him up for AOC, and then popped him here in his debut clan battle. And oh man, this kid did not disappoint. Like, everything was on point about this clan battle that I can't say that there was any real one particular fault lacking. Uh, let me go get something to drink here real quick, because I'm really exhausted. And then we're going to go on ahead and uh, go over my re revision for the clan battle. <sighs> that feels much, much better. Because between an empty stomach and being parched and trying to do this whole revision for this clan battle thing. It's a lot of negatives that stack up. But I feel a lot more content now. Alright, going into revision one. This is going to be going into capture the flag. I believe that was... Uh, the host went back and forth a couple of times. I need to check my notes real quick to see who it is that had the host on that one. Because the host went back and forth a couple different times due to connection relevant issues that happened throughout the first two or three sessions because the, the session documented is the third and or fourth respective session of capture the flag that was able to settle be settled in on where everybody for the most part can generally join into the clan battle now the first two sessions prior to the one that i had documented a7 found it very difficult to keep stable connections in the to the match and so he constantly kept pitching in order to redo the thing over again everybody on our team could connect for the most part but then in another session one of their guys could not connect on ceg side and so he went on ahead and pitched to do the host change a second time if i remember correctly i believe the host in the uh the previous documented session was on CEG's host. This was Aslan's host, I do believe, because the the first time it was one of it was from two AOC people's hosts, but it was not able to completely connect for all of them there. And since A7 didn't connect, then we had to go on ahead and redo this thing again. Since the majority of people could connect to mine or Aswin's host, then we went on ahead and put those two up on the topping table next. Due to a storm that was happening outside on my end at this time then the connections for mine were choppy so the majority of people but predominantly either pro or as when i think could not stably connect into the match or i think most of the people could not connect in and so my net was taken off the table for the time being and we went on ahead and complied with aswin's net there uh, 
we went on ahead with the five versus five as this was agreed to since we had enough people here in order to do a five versus five as Torquinus was actually able to join us here in his first clan battle or second clan battle back into the clan battling scene since the Rebels of Kaon in LSC. So, hey, it's a win-win-win, you know? Here it was a 5v5, A7 could not connect into the match worth a damn, and so we had to then edit this into a 4 versus 4, and so Grimwave the King was able to respectfully uh, sit out on the sides up at the, uh, the top left-hand corner of the, I think the Autobot spawn? Uh, on one of the boxes and was able to manually keep in contact with the people that he was able to do with as NAT issues were playing a role and so everybody could not hear everybody but Swifty Mongs who does not have a mic can hear Grimwave but cannot hear me and so this plays very perfectly into a very good plan that I was able to foresee ahead of time which I was training Shen and Darkrai and Swifty Mongs for in order to coordinate more strategically amidst NAT typing relevant issues and this played very perfectly into that perfect application of said past practice. And I will explain. You see, going into different types of net types hosts, I suspected that eventually we're going to come across another situation where we're all not going to be able to hear each other. But if you go over an idea or a set idea where everybody is roughly on the same page before we get the ball rolling, then everybody is going to play off of each other without even knowing that they're going to be doing it. Kind of like investing in a future phenomenon, let's say. With the magnitude of this clan battle as it was, I suspected that today would be just the day where that would happen. And so, right when we had the last thing that happened where we shifted to Aswin's host, which was, was Capture the Flag was on Aswin's host, I took a little bit of time real quick in order to invest a strategy for the quick huddle here with Swifty Mongs, Darkrai, and Shen, since we all had mics, in order to go over my game plan and what the whole outline is here for Capture the Flag, which was reminiscent of the past strategy that AOC had used against um, Nemesis once upon a time, a long, uh, good ways back. All I had to do was just tweak a couple of people around. Since we had all of our heavy hitters in play, now's a good time in order to try to push and be a lot more aggro rather than being more strategic. Because here I have an idea that they were probably expecting us to play defense and offense and not be completely on the offense. That was the play of the game I wanted to strongly invest in in order to switch up everything. That way it would completely throw the guard off. And for select intervals of the match, though they were able to get our flag a lot of the time, that strategy was able to be very effective in this clan battle. When the net issues happened throughout the totality of the Capture the Flag session, both teams still made the effort to go on ahead and continue the clan battle as it stood. While A7 kept insisting to restart the match, they took it into consideration, but it still kept going. The general state of affairs continued to escalate as the intensity of the match escalated. Here, the combo and the buddy system outline that I continuously kept relaying to Grimwave, and Grimwave kept popping in the chat since people got their phones right there while this is going on. This makes it very easy for me to convey what I need to do and where. While Grimwave is here, while he's absent, not able to be in the clan battle right now, he can chat, he can, we can both kind of texting tag team this. And so while I need them to switch up what they're doing or to be with certain people and all this stuff, he can occasionally keep texting this in the AOC chat while he's right there to everybody that's there currently on the roster outline. And since Shen and Dark Cry and Swifty were here right now alongside me, as Swifty can only hear Grimms and me, he can eat Grimms. Grimms is the key on AOC side and being able to maintain much structural coordination throughout the totality of the NAT issues that were happening with mics. And this this allowed so much good coordination. It was very, very nice. We managed to keep the pressure on them at a number of different intervals and were even able to disrupt one of their own momentums against them and allowed a very good touchdown of sorts in AOC's favor. And the uh, touchdown, uh, was it, the score ended at two captures to the one capture. Now, for me, I'm going to say that you can't continuously keep thinking. 
I understand where A7 is coming from in wanting to restart the whole clan battle over again. Just be but at the same time, you can't... You, I understand where you're coming from in wanting to restart the whole clan battle over again because you can't connect or because there's connection-relevant issues. But at the same time, you can't keep wanting to pitch this whole thing to restart the whole clan battle over again just because you can't connect. But everybody else in your team can connect because at some point, the clan the clan battle will have to go on in some sense without the per without some person or persons being there to some extent. And it'll, it causes unnecessary frustration in the whole progressive progression of events that are happening right now. The clan, to, at some point in this day and age, most clans, if they're well organized enough, will have a natural adaptive eye in changing and being adaptive and in tune to changing circumstances that are likely going to happen within all the logical confines of a clan battling environment. Barring the um, barring the belated arrival of Lord Megatron 187, who was also scheduled to be here today at that time for the CEG and AOC clan battle, all of CEG's key players were present to the match and were all more or less easily well prepared for the most part to coordinate or to attempt to coordinate through the pending changes that may happen from the connection relevant issues to NAT issues on their end, which none of them use mics by the way, to possible disconnections. I don't know, I'm not trying to say anything that positive or negative about it in that regard. I just feel that in some sense that's a bit selfish for a whole proceeding of a clan battle to stop just because one person can't always connect in. There has to be some type of a point where you have to have faith in your team to be able to make all the right judgments without you necessarily being there in person, but being there vocally in order to systematically instruct or spiritually instruct the team to victory. That's the only two cents I can really give about it, as everything else about the clan battle was more or less very structurally sound in the Capture the Flag session. <sighs> Moving on is round two, which was on our host, their map pick, I believe. Speed that along. That was on Array for Conquest, 500 point gap. There, the plan outline here was one of my old outlines that was originally used against the Pride of Festoon back in 2016. However, it was reworked around some, as the majority of this plan here was reworked from uh, Shentaliv and Darkrai's perspective, as they gave an input on how they wanted to switch up a couple of things here and there, and then implement this strategy in order to try and keep pushing and in a sense to try and have Shen, to Shen turn me and Darkrai into the occasional glass cannon since we're both going to be going heavy the whole time. That way we can continue to keep applying pressure to Aswin and pro skills back and forth and keep Marines disoriented long enough in order to keep the advantageous ins and outs in AOC's favor. This tactic was very well executed, in my opinion, as it was able to keep a good deal of momentum in AOC's favor. Coordination was key as the clan battle escalated. <sighs> momentum was further in the Elite Guard's favor more so than in the Alliance, but the Alliance was able to systematically keep up with them. As, uh, honestly, for me, it was pushing me to my limit in everything I was doing as a destroyer and trying to be visually aware and still vocally coordinated in order to know who's going where, who on the enemy team is going where, where they're likely to come from, and how to keep a general sust sustaining of the double capping method long enough to catch the points back up. And it was a very, very difficult juggle doing three things at the same time, but Somehow we were able to do it, and though we lost, it was a very good accomplishment in its own right, as we were almost able to pull that score completely back in our favor. But that right there is what I am very proud of for the most part of the clan battle, is that conquest match next to the capture of the flag. 
And then lastly is the round three, which was the team deathmatch session. During the TDM session, a different tactic was taken as the ruling outline for this part of the clan battle had changed, which was thought upon and agreed to by all of the respective clan leaders that were present. So it was me, A7, and Grimwave. While the agreement of item prohibition and the max of two of a class were still in effect as follows everything still following under the general dmg ruling outline that is in play the use of fire blast and the chaos rift combustor however from said classes were on the table for general use this go round rather than being excluded or exonerated from clan battle etiquette like they usually are in given verbal arrangements of given protocol. In addition to this, amidst the layout of specific tools that are now being used in this huge gray area, this would also mark the debut of Luis, or I am Luis here on his AOC Tonics account. Now, him being a destroyer main for the most part of my present observation and his capabilities following his leave taking of Masters of Cybertron, this allots a good opportunity in him making an established intro properly into the clan battling environment, as a past promised clan opportunity that would have implied the same thing for the same etiquette form from MOC did not occur. So. It was a good move to pick him up, that way he could actually see some action. While the use of the CRC without penalty at this time didn't exactly help him break the habit along in the right sense to not use the freebie weapon, I am okay with this to, to a pretty good degree here, because I can be a lot more lenient. And so long as he was able to have fun in the right sense at that time, like everybody else, then no harm logically was done or could have been done. No harm logically could have been done here. Without worrying about, well, anything. Like anything all, basically, since anything was fair game now at this point. Team Deathmatch did not feel as hard as it previously could have been in some sense. Well, TDM was lost as well, but in a much closer game than anyone had perceived. Looking back on this whole clan battle as a whole, honestly, the total clan battle set up today didn't feel as hard as I first thought it would be once I settled into it. The mindset coming out of it is much different than the mindset I had going into it. This is a good thing, as a towering entity or a dominant opposition, in a way, is not so tall of a match that one would seek to conquer in the end game. And a feeling of contentment here is what I'm hoping was reached for the Alliance of Chaos from today's rewarding endeavor. As for me personally, I can't help but feel as if I still need to do better. However, today can suffice as it stands. I spent my hours each day up till the day before that this clan battle thing just doing solo escalation and TDM practicing quick hip firing and counter movements in order to prepare myself specifically for this battle where I knew 100% I had to be pushing myself to my limit the whole time to represent my clan or to even keep up with the pace if the p if the pace would be seeking to be picked up or be beyond a foreseeably scouted prediction but nonetheless i think i can suffice with today's general outline here and the alliance of chaos will be able to fight another day as you all always will and in the end of days that is the key thing is to be able to walk away and we go and fight another battle another day faster, stronger, smarter, wiser. Making it do what we do to represent the Alliance like how we do. Very good work all in all. And this will conclude my synopsis regarding the 
Alliance of Chaos and the Cybertron Elite Guard Chapter 3 Aftermath Documented Thesis. You guys have a good one ahead, and as always, till all are one.